go to sing the psalm. There's a second reading. This one, I'm sorry. Okay, they're both the ones on that. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. The grace of our Lord Jesus Christ, the love of God, and the communion of the Holy Spirit be with you all. We come together this evening to pray for those whose funerals took place in the churches of Kinvara Parish, or whose funerals had some connection with the churches of Kinvara Parish over the past year. And we have 20 names um, from the, the list over the, the, the year gone by. So a very uh, different kind kind of a year like the year before it um, so two, two years that, that stood out so um, we pray for consolation for the families who had to have different kinds of funerals with lots of restrictions connected with them so we ask the Lord to bless and console them and we ask for eternal life for those who have died so we're going to have a candle brought up for each person who has died to the uh, altar here to burn during the Mass as a, as a symbol of the prayer being offered up for them. So um, I'd ask if there's a, a member of the family for, for each person present, um, so well and good, I'd invite you to, to bring the candle up for the person and if not, um, Maeve, uh, and Anne, Maeve is going to organise the candles and Anne will, will kindly bring them up then. So I'll just name out those who have died, those whose funerals took place in the churches of Kinvara during the year. Kate Kelly. Tommy Maguire.
hear them call us. Teresa Lenan. <laughs> Martha Neelan. Michael Hastings. Roisin Hayes. Paddy Murray. Una Murphy. Bridget Donahoe. Salveg West. Nora Glynn.
Mary Moroni. Peter Waters. Berna Lynch. <laughs> Michael Dealey. Bernie McInerney. Tommy O'Hanlon. Anne McHugh. <laughs> Mary Q. So as we remember them all, we entrust them into the arms of the Lord as we offer up the holy sacrifice of the Mass for them. Brothers and sisters, let us acknowledge our sins and so prepare ourselves to celebrate the sacred mysteries. I confess to Almighty God and to you, my brothers and sisters, that I have greatly sinned in my thoughts and in my words, in what I have done and in what I have failed to do. To my fault, to my fault, to my most grievous fault. Therefore I ask, Blessed Mary ever virgin, all the angels and saints, and you, my brothers and sisters, to pray for me to the Lord our God. May Almighty God have mercy on us, forgive us our sins, and bring us to everlasting life. I hear na jan I hear na dain a Christian throw 
Let us pray. O God, who willed that your only begotten Son, having conquered death, should pass over into the realm of heaven, grant, we pray, to your departed servants, Kate, Tommy, Kearden, Teresa, Martha, Michael, Roshin, Paddy, Una, Bridget, Solvig, Nora, Mary, Peter, Berna, Michael, Bernie, Tommy, Anne, and Mary, that with the mortality of this life overcome, they may gaze eternally on you, their Creator and Redeemer, through our Lord Jesus Christ, your Son, who lives and reigns with you in the unity of the Holy Spirit, God forever and ever. First reading. A reading from the prophet Isaiah. On this mountain, the Lord of hosts will prepare for all peoples a banquet of rich food. On this mountain, he will remove the mourning veil covering all peoples and the shroud enwrapping all nations. He will destroy death forever. The Lord will wipe away the tears from every cheek. He will take away his people's shame everywhere on earth. For the Lord has said so. That day it will be said, See, this is our God in whom we hoped for salvation. The Lord is the one in whom we hoped. We exult and we rejoice that he has saved us. The word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. Second reading, a reading from the letter of St. Paul to the Romans. 
With God on our side, who can be against us? Since God did not spare his own son, but gave him up to benefit us all, we may be certain after such a gift that he will not refuse anything he can give. Could anyone accuse those that God has chosen? When God acquits, could anyone condemn? Could Christ Jesus? No, he not only died for us, he rose from the dead, and there at God's right hand he stands and pleads for us. Nothing, therefore, can come between us and the love of Christ, even if we are troubled and worried, or being persecuted, or lacking food or clothing, or being threatened or even attacked. Those are the trials through which we triumph, by the power of him who loved us. For I am certain of this, neither death nor life, no angel, no prince, nothing that exists, nothing still to come, not any power or height or depth, not in any created thing can ever come between us and the love of God made visible in Christ Jesus. The word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. servant is listening, for you have the message of eternal life. Alleluia, alleluia, alleluia. The Lord be with you. A reading from the Holy Gospel according to John. Mary, the sister of Lazarus, went to Jesus. And as soon as she saw him, she threw, him, threw herself at his feet, saying, Lord, if you had been here, my brother would not have died. At the sight of her tears and those of the Jews that follow, who followed her, Jesus said in great distress, with a sigh that came straight from the heart, Where have you put him? They said, Lord, come and see. Jesus wept, and the Jews said, See how much he loved him. But there were some who remarked, he opened the eyes of the blind man. Could he not have prevented this man's death? Still sighing, Jesus reached the tomb. It was a cave with a stone to close the opening. Jesus said, take the stone away. Martha said to him, Lord, by now he will smell. This is the fourth day. Jesus replied, have I not told you that if you believe, you will see the glory of God? So they took away the stone. Then Jesus lifted up his eyes and said, Father, I thank you for hearing my prayer. I knew indeed that you always hear me, but I speak for the sake of all these who stand around me, so that they may believe it was you who sent me. When he had said this, he cried out in a loud voice, Lazarus, here, come out. The dead man came out, his feet and hands bound with bands of stuff and a cloth round his face. Jesus said to them, Unbind him, let him go free. Many of the Jews who had come to visit Mary and had seen what he did believed in him. The Gospel of the Lord. We believe in the resurrection of the dead because of the resurrection of Jesus. But we still grieve at being parted from them until we meet again. That's natural. As we heard in that gospel, Jesus himself wept about the death of Lazarus, even though he was about to raise him from the dead. In some ways, the first year after a death is the hardest, though I know that grief is different for each person and it can move at different speeds, but we always miss our deceased loved ones. But I think there is a value in coming together this evening, remembering those who have died in the past year, and for the bereaved families to be together to support each other in prayer. Last year, this Mass had to be online only, and um, again, last year, during the past year, you have had to endure various restrictions on the funerals of your loved ones because of the pandemic. 
So it hasn't been easy. People were thoughtful and creative and came up with lots of safe ways to express support and kindness for the bereaved families. I hope that this occasion can give you a chance to experience some peace in prayer. In the first reading, the prophet Isaiah foretold a time when God will destroy death forever. The Lord will wipe away the tears from every cheek. We exult and we rejoice that he has saved us. Our faith allows joy to gradually come back into our lives after a death because we believe that death is not the end and that there is life after death not just vague living on in people's memories, but personal life, the person we knew loved by God and redeemed by the life, death, and resurrection of Jesus. The resurrection of Jesus is the reason for our hope in eternal life. As St. Paul explained in the second reading, he not only died for us, he rose from the dead, and there at God's right hand, he stands and pleads for us. St. Paul was passionate that nothing can come between us and the love of Christ. So let's allow Jesus to be close to us, to reassure us and to help us to glimpse the bright future to which he invites us. Each of the people we are praying for this evening was dear to his or her family and we thank God for the goodness of their lives. None of us are perfect so we ask our all merciful God to forgive them for any sins they may have had. They are missed by you, their families, but also by the community here. I feel that touch of sadness that I will not meet them again in this life, but I do hope to encounter them again in God's kingdom. This evening, we pray for Kate, Tommy, Kieran, Teresa, Martha, Michael, Roshin, Paddy, Una, Bridget, Solvig, Nora, Mary, Peter, Bernie, Michael, sorry, Berna, Michael, Bernie, Tommy, Anne, and Mary. May they hear those words that Jesus said to Lazarus, come out, unbind him, let him go free. At the moment, we are in a year of St. Joseph, going from his feast last March to the same date, the 19th of March in 2022. And here we are in St. Joseph's church. Church tradition has presumed that St. Joseph died when Jesus was relatively young, as the Bible stops mentioning him after the childhood of Jesus. So Jesus and Mary experienced bereavement. May each of you, each of, each of those whom we are remembering this evening, be united into the Holy Family, and may you be reunited, reunited with them as family again when your time comes. Each of those who died this year was unique with his or her own story. Each of them is loved by God, and so we turn to him in prayer again as we offer up the holy sacrifice of the Mass for the happy repose of their souls. May their souls and the souls of all the faithful departed, through the mercy of God, rest in peace. Amen. So I invite you to stand now for our prayer of the faithful. We turn in prayer to God our Father, who raised his Son, our Lord Jesus, from the dead. Lord, we pray for the Church throughout the world, light up the lives of all Christians with the hope of the resurrection. Lord, hear us. Lord, graciously hear us. We ask forgiveness and peace for all lost through accidents, disasters, war violence and COVID-19 and for those who have nobody to pray for them. Lord, hear us. Lord, graciously hear us. As we thank you, Lord, for the lives of those who died during the year, we pray that all that they held sacred and everything in which they were wonderful will continue to influence our hearts and lives. Lord, hear us. Lord, graciously hear us. We pray for all who mourn the death of a spouse, child, parent, brother, sister, friend or relative especially those who feel that cross very difficult to carry at the moment. Lord, hear us. Lord, graciously hear us. We pray for all present that through your grace we live good lives and that when our own time comes, we will meet you in peace. Lord, hear us. Lord, graciously hear us. Grant eternal life 
to those whose funerals took place in Canvara Parish over the past 12 months. We remember Kate Kelly, Tommy McGuire, Kieran Corliss, Teresa Linnan, Martha Nalen, Michael Hastings, Rogin Hayes, Paddy Murray, Una Murphy, Bridget Donoghue, Salvig West, Nora Glynn, Mary Maroney, Peter Waters, Verna Lynch, Michael Dealey, Bernie McInerney, Tommy O'Hanlon, Anne McHugh and Mary Kew. Lord hear us. Lord graciously hear us. God our Father, you raised Jesus from the dead. Grant eternal life to those for whom we pray this evening and console those who mourn. Through Jesus Christ, your risen Son, our Lord, who lives and reigns with you in the unity of the Holy Spirit, God forever and ever. Amen. Brothers and sisters, that my sacrifice and yours may be acceptable to God the Almighty Father. Look with favour, we pray, O Lord, on the sacrificial offerings we present to you for the souls of your servants. And just as you bestowed on them the dignity of the Christian faith, grant them also its reward through Christ our Lord. The Lord be with you. Lift up your hearts. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is truly right and just, our duty and our salvation, always and everywhere to give you thanks. Lord, Holy Father, Almighty and Eternal God, through Christ our Lord. In him the hope of blessed resurrection has dawned. Let those saddened by the certainty of dying might be consoled by the promise of immortality to come. Indeed, for your faithful Lord, life is changed, not ended. And when this earthly dwelling turns to dust, an eternal dwelling is made ready for them in heaven. And so with angels and archangels, with thrones and dominions, and with all the hosts and powers of heaven, we sing the hymn of your glory, as without end we acclaim. Holy, holy, holy Lord, God. indeed holy O Lord and all you have created rightly gives you praise for through your Son our Lord Jesus Christ by the power and working of the Holy Spirit you give life to all things and make them holy and you never se cease to gather a people to yourself so that from the rising of the Sun to its setting a pure sacrifice may be offered to your name therefore O Lord we humbly implore you by the same Spirit graciously make holy these gifts we have brought to you for consecration, that they may become the body and blood of your Son, our Lord Jesus Christ, 
at whose command we celebrate these mysteries. For on the night he was betrayed, he himself took bread, and giving you thanks, he said the blessing, broke the bread, and gave it to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and eat of it, for this is my body, which will be given up for you. In a similar way, when supper was ended, he took the chalice, and giving you thanks, he said the blessing, and gave the chalice to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and drink from it, for this is the chalice of my blood, the blood of the new and eternal covenant, which will be poured out for you and for many for the forgiveness of sins. Do this in memory of me. The mystery of faith. Save us, Saviour of the world, for by your cross and resurrection you have set us free. Therefore, O Lord, as we celebrate the memorial of the saving passion of your Son, his wondrous resurrection and ascension into heaven, and as we look forward to his second coming, we offer you in thanksgiving this holy and living sacrifice. Look, we pray, upon the oblation of your church, and recognizing the sacrificial victim by whose death you willed to reconcile us to yourself, grant that we, who are nourished by the body and blood of your Son, and filled with his Holy Spirit, may become one body, one spirit in Christ. May he make of us an eternal offering to you, so that we may obtain an inheritance with your elect, especially with the most blessed Virgin Mary, Mother of God, with blessed Joseph, her spouse, with your blessed apostles and glorious martyrs, and with all the saints on whose constant intercession in your presence we rely for unfailing help. May this sacrifice of our reconciliation, we pray, O Lord, advance the peace and salvation of all the world. Be pleased to confirm in faith and charity your pilgrim church on earth, with your servant Francis our Pope and Brendan our Bishop, the order of bishops, all the clergy, and the entire people you have gained for your own. Listen graciously to the prayers of this family whom you have summoned before you. In your compassion, O merciful Father, gather to yourself all your children scattered throughout the world. Remember your servants, Kate, Tommy, Kieran, Teresa, Martha, Michael, Roshin, Paddy, Una, Bridget, Solvig, Nora, Mary, Peter, Berna, Michael, Bernie, Tommy, Anne, and Mary, whom you have called from this world to yourself. Grant that they who are united with your Son in a death like his may also be one with him in his resurrection, when from the earth he will raise up in the flesh those who have died and transform our lowly body after the pattern of his own glorious body. To our departed brothers and sisters too, and to all who are pleasing to you at their passing from this life, give kind admittance to your kingdom. There we hope to enjoy forever the fullness of your glory when you will wipe away every tear from our eyes. For seeing you, our God, as you are, we shall be like you for all the ages and praise you without end through Christ our Lord, through whom you bestow on the world all that is good. Through him and with him and in him, O God, Almighty Father, in the unity of the Holy Spirit, all glory and honour is yours forever and ever. Amen. At the Saviour's command, and formed by divine teaching, we dare to say, Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. 
Deliver us, Lord, we pray, from every evil. Graciously grant peace in our days, that by the help of your mercy, we may be always free from sin and safe from all distress, as we await the blessed hope and the coming of our Saviour, Jesus Christ. In the power and the glory of yours, now and forever. Lord Jesus Christ, who said to your apostles, Peace I leave you, my peace I give you. Look not on our sins, but on the faith of your Church, and graciously grant her peace and unity in accordance with your will, who live and reign forever and ever. The peace of the Lord be with you always. May this mingling with the body and blood of our Lord Jesus Christ be eternal life to us. Receive it. Lamb of God, you take away the sins of the world. Have mercy on us. Lamb of God, you take away the sins of the world. Have mercy on us. Lamb of God, you take away the sins of the world. Grant us peace. Behold the Lamb of God. Behold him who takes away the sins of the world. Blessed are those called to the supper of the Lamb. Lord, I am not worthy that you should enter under my roof, but only say the word, and my soul shall be healed. Tag ich an Bord an Tierna, Agus blasig i all weiß a Christ, Bio a Tasche in our mask on
life without its hunger. Each restless heart beats so imperfectly. But when you come and I am filled with wonder, sometimes I Let us pray. Through these sacrificial gifts which we have received, O Lord, bestow on your departed servants your great mercy, and to those you have endowed with the grace of baptism, grant also the fullness of eternal joy through Christ our Lord. And of course we keep in our hearts and we pray for those who had other, other kinds of funerals, those who were from the area and who, who died during the year. May their souls and the souls of all the faithful departed, through the mercy of God, rest in peace. Amen. I want to thank those who helped out to make the evening so meaningful uh, today. Um, thank you to uh, Maeve Carney and Dave Hogan, who played the, the music. And thanks for your generosity in coming out uh, this evening to um, show your great respect for those who died during the year. It was very much appreciated by all of us. And thank you to Patricia Donahue McCullough, who um, set up the, the sanctuary and um, put up the remembrance tree with the, the names of the, the, the deceased of the year. So thanks, Patricia, for your preparations for this Mass. And I thank and Vesey who was the sacristan for the Mass this evening, and to Catherine Leahy, the parish secretary, who uh, prepared the leaflet for the Mass. So we remember those who have died, and we ask the Lord to continue to console you all with happy memories of them, and looking forward to being reunited with them one day in the future. The Lord be with you. May Almighty God bless you, Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit. Go in peace, glorifying the Lord by your life.
was lovely, no check. That was lovely. How are you, Trisha? That's tough. Brendan, how are you, love? I just want to say this is only in the box. Yeah. Don't presume with the rest. Okay. Because the quote is very frustrating. I tell you what, we leave it somewhere. We leave the box. We just leave the box as it is. Okay, Brenda. Okay, great. No problem at all.